Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to That Triathlon Show, the podcast presented by scientifictriathlon.com. I'm your host Michael and this episode is beginner tip 32, where we will discuss three rules for planning your training week. But first, big thanks to our sponsors Precision Hydration that you can find on precisionhydration.com. And if you haven't already, you can hear the backstory of Precision Hydration in episode 49 of this podcast, scientifictriathlon.com forward slash TTS49, where I interview founder of PH, Andy Blow, and we talk about, among other things, how hydration is important for performance, for preventing cramping, etc., and the backstory of the company in how Andy himself was an elite triathlete that often struggled in long races and in hot conditions and basically scratch his own itch and uh, learn all there is to learn about hydration and electrolytes and ended up forming Precision Hydration to help solve this problem for other athletes that are also struggling with the same. And if you want to buy electrolytes from Precision Hydration, you can use the promo code TTS20, which will give you 20% off any products in the month of August. And big thanks to Roka, which is the world's premium triathlon apparel brand. You can find them on roka.com. Roka's backstory is that it was formed in a garage in Austin, Texas in 2013 with uh, the mission to build the world's fastest wetsuit. Uh, They have accomplished that mission, but it hasn't stopped there. Whenever Roka sees an opportunity to innovate, to challenge the status quo and disrupt the triathlon apparel market with their mind-blowing products. They go all in for it. They really focus in on the R&D in their products. And this has led to some great results with Roka athletes winning multiple Olympic gold medals, dozens of world titles and Tour de France stage victories and more along those lines along the years since their start in 2013. And you can get 20% off your entire order on roca.com when you use the promo code DATTRIATHLONSHOW, all one word, all caps. All right, so let's talk about the three rules for planning your training week. This topic falls under the bigger umbrella of structuring your entire training plan, which I've, I've covered before in, uh, in various episodes. For example, episode 84, The Beginner's Guide to Training Plans. Beginner tip 7, training for a sprint distance, and beginner tip 8, training for an Olympic distance. I'll link to all of those in the episode description. But here we go down to a more detailed, more granular level, granular level, excuse me, and uh, we assume that you know the overall big picture of your training plan. You know roughly how much training you will be doing any given week and what type of training you should be doing within each discipline leading up to your race for each week. This is your starting point, and if you're not clear on how to get to this starting point, again, go and listen to those episodes that I just mentioned before. But from here, how do you put those workouts into your schedule uh, on a weekly basis in a smart way to get uh, a good and effective training week planned? For example, like where, how do you know where to put your rest day, where to place your swim technique workouts, and where to place your bike run brick workout? You can really boil it down to three simple rules. That's all you need to do this. So it's fairly simple. Uh, Whereas in comparison, getting to that starting point of knowing how much training and what type of training in each discipline to be doing, the big picture of things, that's a very difficult question to answer. Very complicated and complex. So so this is uh, positive news that this is a simple topic. So let's get into it. Rule number one is to spread out your rest days. So let's say that you you might be training five days days per week and have two rest days. And uh, in that case, try to distribute your rest days evenly. Don't train five days straight from Monday through Friday and then rest Saturday through Sunday. Uh, Rather, move one rest day to the middle of the week. So maybe your rest days would fall on, on a Wednesday and a Saturday to have that sort of spread with the rest days. And rule number two is to spread out workouts in each discipline. So let's say that you're doing two runs, two bikes, and two swims per week. Then you don't want to do swims on Monday and Tuesday, uh, bikes on Wednesday and Thursday, and runs on Thursday and Saturday. You want to rather be doing something like swimming on Monday and Thursday, biking on Tuesday and Friday, and running on Wednesday and Saturday. 
it's uh, very, very intuitive. It's uh, not complex at all. And probably, even if you are a beginner, this is something that uh, that you already figured out and, and you're saying, well, duh, this is, uh, this is self-evident. And that's great because it really is that simple. And rule number three is to spread out your hard days and your easy days. This can be a bit more complex because it also depends a bit on what discipline we're talking about. But... Uh, to, to make it real simple, try to, if at all possible, sandwich your easier days between days with, uh, with more intense or longer workouts. So if you, have, if you have, for example, three harder workouts, and that might be two interval workouts and one longer workout, workout maybe a brick workout on a weekend, then you could try to do those interval workouts on a Tuesday and Thursday and a brick on a Saturday. And then the easier workouts would fall on the Monday, Wednesday and Friday, and Sunday might be a rest day. For example, that's, uh, that's one example of how to do this. That's not to say that you can't do two hard days in a row, but in that case, definitely do it in a way that m- perhaps you do a hard swim and a hard bike on consecutive days and try to avoid absolutely avoid doing two hard runs or two hard bikes consecutively but also if possible try to maybe avoid doing a hard bike followed by a hard run but rather do that swim bike or swim run combo since the swimming uses so different muscle groups to running and biking that it's it's a bit easier to combine the two hard workouts from those two disciplines when swimming is involved compared to combining biking and uh, running where you really use your your legs for both of those sports so there's also a bonus application of these three rules if you have made the choice to buy a good training plan uh, whether it's ready-made or custom, customized for you, both of which, may I add, are very intelligent decisions for any beginner, you may find that sometimes you have uh, other commitments, work or family or something similar, that means that you can't do the swim on a Monday as planned, or whatever it may be. So you can use these same rules when you need to reschedule in your training week that you already have from your training plan. So, so let's say that you happen to have your weekly swims scheduled for the Monday and uh, the Wednesday, uh, and you, now you have to move your Monday swim. Then don't move it to Tuesday or Thursday, getting two consecutive swims on or two swims on consecutive days. Uh, but uh, rather try to move uh, try to move it to, for example, Friday or Saturday instead. Or you can move it to Tuesday and move that Wednesday swim to Friday, and instead move something else from Friday to Wednesday. So uh, those are just some examples. And uh, when doing these changes, of course, you would still look to make sure that you stay within the bounds of uh, the other rules that we talked about. So distributing your rest days evenly throughout the week and distributing your hard days and your easy days as well. Uh, By the way, regarding distributing your rest days, try to look at a macro scale as well. So uh, if you have just one rest day per week and you have it on a Monday... Then or a Sunday, sorry, then the next week, don't look at it in isolation, but try to put next week's rest day on a Sunday as well, if possible, or maybe on a Saturday, but uh, don't put it on a Monday, because then you will have two consecutive rest days, even if it's uh, from crossing over from, from week to week. So if you only look at it in isolation, it doesn't really work. You need to look at the bigger picture as well. And the same goes for the other rules, of course. Anyway, once you're done with your rescheduling, look over the the entire week and that macro level one more time, cross-check against these three rules, and then you're done. You changed the training plan to fit in with your life and your schedule outside of triathlon while keeping it as effective as intended. So, well done. All right, this was a, a simple one, quite a short one. I really hope that you enjoyed this and found it useful. Again, those related episodes that I mentioned will be linked to in the episode description, and I highly recommend listening to them. The Beginner's Guide to Training Plans is episode 84 of that triathlon show. And then we have Beginner Tips 7 and 8, Training for a Sprint Distance and Training for an Olympic Distance, respectively. Finally, I want to remind you of the giveaway that I'm running on scientifictriathlon.com forward slash giveaway. That too will be linked to in the episode description. And you can find it on the website scientifictriathlon.com. 
There will be 13 winners, one main winner, two runners-up, and 10 more runners-up to the runners-up. And they will get a whole heap of great prizes, like a training plan bundle, customized training program that I'll make for you, and coaching consultations, triathlon books, products, and apps that I've handpicked for this giveaway. So uh, that's uh, there's a whole lot of great prizes to win there. So go and enter and uh, please share it as much as you can. That will not only give you a much, much bigger chance of winning, but also it will help get the word out about the podcast, which is uh, one of the goals of uh, this giveaway, other than bringing you, of course, great products and great services to uh, to give, give back to you as a thank you for listening to the podcast and being loyal listeners. But I definitely do want to get the word out and uh, grow the audience. So uh, if you can share it, it would be very much appreciated. Appreciated. Big thanks also to all the partners for this giveaway Precision Hydration, Swim Smooth, Berm Biosystems, which is the company behind Exert, Human Kinetics, and Velo Press. And finally, big thanks to our sponsors, Roka, that you can find on roka.com. If you're looking for triathlon apparel like wetsuits, tri suits, swim skins, etc., look no further. Go to roka.com and use the promo code that triathlon show. All one word, all caps, to get 20% off your entire order. And thank you to Precision Hydration that you can find on precisionhydration.com. Use the promo code TTS20 to get 20% off all your electrolyte products, which is valid in the month of August. So hurry up and uh, make sure that you use that code as long as it lasts. Thank you, as always, for listening. Keep training smart and keep loving triathlon.